reason why we're sitting here, Dave, is because your father bought the Royal Alex, and if he had not, I would not have gone into the theater. Oh, I didn't if know that. If your dad had not have bought that theater, I would not have seen the Bristol Old Vic play Hamlet. I would not have seen a moment on stage mm. that lifted me out of my seat and told me what I was going to do with my life. So the fact that we are sitting here is because your dad bought that theater. I, I would That's be a wonderful. physics teacher. I would <laughs> be teaching physics in some <laughs> high school somewhere. So uh, there is a connection here that is... Well, there's been a connection like that with many, many people with my father in many different fields of life. Interestingly enough, my neighbor across the street who just moved in uh, said, you know, I was pumping gas and your father used to go to that gas station. And I said to him, Mr. Mervish, I'd like to be a success like you. Shall I open a retail store? He was 14 at the time. My father said, I don't think that's, well, you could, but you know, not next door to me, I hope. Don't cut prices. And he said, well, well, what should I do? He said, well, you should, if you can, you should buy real estate. And uh, he said, oh, well, should I try and buy something near your store? And my father said, no, buy it on King Street. <laughs> and, uh, and, and this person is now a grown up, and he has a lot of real estate and he owns a lot of real estate on King Street and it's changed his life and yeah. it's very interesting. You know, you, you, I, I bump into you know, people who he helped them start a magazine or he did something that, you know, that I knew nothing about. Right. So it's always interesting uh, and sometimes you, you have effects that you, you know nothing about. I, mean, I, I remember we put on Slava's Snow Show and at the end of Slava's Snow Show, there were these giant balls. That's about five years ago? About five, maybe more, maybe more than five, I think. But mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, some, somewhere in there. And, you know, at first, the audience was puzzled by it. Here's this clown from Russia, and the first act is 20 minutes. And then there's an intermission. And uh, someone comes on stage pulling a rope. And finally, at the end of the rope is another clown who emerges. Uh, and in the end, they have confetti raining down you, and there are these balls, ro and the audience is playing with the balls. And I'm getting sued because this little old lady gets knocked over and she cracks a rib. And then one person swallows one of these pieces of confetti, and they run out to the front of the street and they vomit. You know, and, and so that's what I remember. <laughs> but then the year after, I go to Stratford, and I'm being served dinner at Rundle's. And the waiter says to me, I'm an actor, and I was going to give up, but I went to Slava's Snow Show, and it inspired me, and I want to stay in the acting profession. And it changed my life, David. It meant something to me, that show. So, you know, you don't have a clue as to what you're doing. I look at Lion King, and I see all those young children that went to it, and I say to myself, someday one of them is going to come into the theater either, either as a composer or as a set designer, uh, we put on uh, uh, the color purple, and I'm sitting watching it in a theater in, in New York, and I get up from my chair, and my wife stays in her seat, and begins a conversation with this lady next to her. And she's very excited. She says, my daughter was the composer of this, and I have 50 relatives here watching with me. And her daughter's on the other side, quite embarrassed to hear her mother, you know, advancing her. And then she said, where are you from? Audrey said, well, I'm from Toronto. And she said, oh, my daughter started there. Uh, I moved to Hamilton when she was 17, and she was in uh, Hare. And Mr. Mervish let her use the piano in between the matinees and the evening performances because she was practicing piano at the time. You know, and wow. then we put the show on. Wow. You know, so well, all sorts of strange things happen that are wonderful in the theater that are unexpected or unintended. Sometimes I'm so proud of Canada and Toronto and how far we've grown, you know, your dad and the Alex and all the growing through the 60s and 70s and I, I feel good about it. And other times when I listen to this kind of thing and think of these exhibitions going around and, and knowing having been just come back from Berlin and I'm up to Moscow, that we haven't started yet. Well, we, we just, we, we have such opportunity. We really can play a role you know, anywhere in the world, and, 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 and I think 
we now have the relationships that allow it, and we have the talent to allow it. You know, I think of, of Maya and Dionisio uh, in Miss Saigon here, and it was her first really professional role. But she went on to play it in Australia and South Africa, and then London, and she played it in the evening in London, Miss Saigon, but she played Martin Gare in the matinees across the street at the same time. So she was playing in two shows at the same time, and then she went back to Stratford and did roles there. Wow. And you know, if you think of many, many actors, I mean, Louise Petrie opening on Broadway for Mamma Mia, you know, so uh, we think of all the, the wonderful people we've had in our theaters and how, you know, uh, Richard McMillan is coming back to us and has been, you know, with Scar in, in Lion King for three and a half years here for us. David Musi, who works in the office here, spent seven years of his life on our stage, and I had offered him a job ten years before he took the one in the office here. Uh, but he said he was having too much fun, and then uh, one day he was offered two main roles, and he had to really decide. And he'd been in a movie with Clint Eastwood, he'd been in London, and he'd been in Broadway. He said, it's not going to get better for me than, than that. And uh, you know, I'll take a pay cut and work in the office here. I, I know I'll end up making more in the end. You know, it's, but he's been great because it gives us a, an actor's perspective of what it's like uh, in terms of equity rules, in terms of, of all of the various rules of the theater. And you know, it, it makes us understand better what people are facing in the various jobs they have so that we have better relationships with our unions just because we understand both sides a little better. You know, so it's, it's all interesting. Your dad and the Queen. Your father received the Order of the British Empire. What Commander of the British Empire. Commander of the British Empire. What did he say? How did he describe that? Were you, well, were he, you there? He, he was, I was there. My mother was there. My wife w uh, was there. Uh, you know, he, he, he felt very honored, obviously. Uh, um, and in England, he was commander of the British Empire. But in Canada, as far as he was concerned, he was commander of bargains everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you know, he, I think he thought, you know, you, start, you can start on Dundas Street and end up at Buckingham Palace. That's, that's pretty good. That, that says a lot about this country and what your opportunities are. I agree. I think that that, that was his reaction. It, it was interesting as an experience because uh, England, you know, has great pomp and ceremony and history, and uh, it, it's uh, and they they play the appropriate music for the award you're receiving. So uh, there was an orchestra behind, and, and they began out with knights and uh, various titles, and this was the first below knights and the, the highest as a Canadian that you c were able to receive or, or, or accept it. and so it was it, w it was you know very flattering um, and I think they played something uh, by Mozart for his award uh, uh, the, and then the music sort of got sort of more populist depending on on what the award was uh, and and I noted that but but afterwards, they let you all have your pictures taken in the courtyard, and not with the Queen, but but uh, but Her Majesty had something to say to each person, and you know it was it, it, it was it was a lovely ceremony. Um, I think that uh, you know my father certainly received a lot of wonderful attention. He he received that. Uh, we shared uh, an award from the Society of West End Theatres, uh, the National gave us a, an award, uh, the Lord Rain Award, which had only been given out, I think, eight or nine times uh, by them. And, uh, and they make a lovely shelf. Shel where's the shelf? There's a shelf in his office. And it's in got... In it, it, Blur? Yes, at, at Honest Ed's. You know, the, 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 he, he always used to, when he showed people around the office, he would show them he was made a freeman of the City of London. And there are two privileges that are that come with that. One is that you're allowed to take your sheep across London Bridge, and you don't have to pay the toll. So he went out and he rented some sheep, and he took them across the bridge 
Vaudeville. <laughs> yes, nobody had done that in quite a long time. Vaudeville. <laughs> Vaudeville. <laughs> and Omnibus put it on television. Uh, the other was that if you committed a hanging offense, <laughs> they couldn't use hemp. They had to use a silk cord. Really? That one he didn't test. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that on the peppercorn. Peppercorn? That, no. Peppercorn. Peppercorn. Peppercorn and hanging a fence, silk cord. Thank you, David. Pleasure. This was really wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.